with regard to energy. There are 759 million people in the world without access to electricity, while nearly 3 billion people do not have access to clean cooking fuels and technologies. At the same time, the energy sector accounts for almost three quarters of greenhouse gas emissions. The critical challenge, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, is how to reduce carbon emissions from the energy sector while ensuring that all people have access to clean and secure energy source. Ladies and gentlemen, global food systems, sustainable energy production, and climate change are all intertwined. On the one hand, food production is highly vulnerable to climate change. And at the same time, production of food is energy intensive. About 30% of global energy demand is associated with food production and the consumption process. So we therefore today call for the accelerated action by multi-stakeholder partnerships at all levels to advance innovative pathways to achieve sustainable food and energy production and consumption. This should go hand in hand with sound business practices, including the management of chemicals and wastes, reduction of food losses, prevention of plastic pollution, and zero incidence of corruption. This is a raise the author of, of the UN Global Compact. As countries build back better from the pandemic, we call upon the UN Global Compact to invoke its quintessential role to ensure that business becomes a force for good, an engine of innovation, and a strong partner for our global society. I want to thank you, Secretary General, for convening this second SDG Summit. It provides us with much needed opportunity to give impetus to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. The pandemic has stalled, and in some cases even reversed, the tremendous gains on achieving the SDGs. I want today to reaffirm Kenya's commitment to the SDGs and to ensuring that we maintain the implementation momentum that we started with. Kenya developed a country SDG roadmap in the year 2016, which was then integrated with our national development agenda through our medium-term plan. Additionally, my administration has sharpened the economic policy by prioritizing action in sectors with the greatest multiplier effect on the economy, these being namely affordable housing, manufacturing, universal health coverage, and food security and nutrition. These actions are intended to accelerate SDGs 2, 3, 8, and 11, and underpin progress on the rest of the goals that we have set. We have made excellent progress on some of the SDGs, in particular on education, gender, and climate change. On other SDGs, it remains work in progress. Under SDG 2, which aims to end hunger and achieve food security, we face headwinds because of the vagrancies of weather triggered by climate change. Kenya has undertaken measures to promote sustainable cities and human settlements and undertaken major housing and infrastructure upgrades to reduce the expansion of informal settlements as well as urban slums. On climate change, we have taken measures to promote sustainable use of the terrestrial ecosystem and embarked on a forestation program to increase our forest cover to 10% of our total land mass by the year 2022. And I am glad to say 
that we are on track. My administration has undertaken two voluntary national reporting assessments for the SDGs. We have found that priorities of my administration adequately cover the SDG targets and with greater international solidarity, we will build back better, build back stronger, and regain the momentum on achieving the SDGs. I want to begin by thanking the UN Global Compact for convening this important forum on the role of the private sector in the global food systems and sustainable energy production. I am also proud that the UN Global Compact has thrived even in such challenging times under the leadership of Sandra Ojiambo, a daughter of Kenya. The stakes, ladies and gentlemen, could not be higher. To rebuild our economies and meet our SDGs, we need to marshal substantial financial resources. And this calls for us to use this crisis as an opportunity to rethink our development strategies, embrace private sector, and be bold and resourceful in addressing the global challenges that confront us. The private sector will be key in this endeavor. The pandemic has demonstrated that given the right political and institutional support, the private sector can complement the public sector to rapidly create the needed capacity and innovation to beat the virus and catalyze strong and resilient recovery. This was demonstrated during the pandemic when the Kenyan private sector actively stepped in to produce COVID-19 protective equipment. Kenya has established a strong partnership with the private sector that engages with government to influence public policy for an enabling business environment. We have also strengthened public-private partnerships as a vehicle to deliver major government programs. We need to harness our private sector to address the challenge of the global food systems and also sustainable energy production. Approximately 700 million people in the world are today undernourished and one quarter of the world's population is food insecure. We reaffirm the commitment to the Sustainable Development Goal number two that aims to achieve a world without hunger and end malnutrition in all its forms by the year 2030. 